Good afternoon, one and all. On behalf of uh, Southern India Chamber of Commerce and Industry and uh, Francis Xavier Co Engineering College, uh, we'd like to welcome all the, uh, the speakers and all the other guests here today for the session. Uh, for the Tech Connect, the first session we are, uh, we are doing it on the Addictive Manufacturing 3D Printing today, uh, which is very essential for today's uh, engineering background students. Uh, so, just to kickstart the session, uh, I'd like to invite our uh, guest, Mr. Sanjay Gunal Singh, board member, Siki. He's a director, Excel Needles, and uh, president, Elshia. Uh, I invite him to deliver the welcome remarks on this. Over to you, sir. Uh, on behalf of uh, Siki, and as a representative of Siki in Trinavali district, I take this opportunity to welcome everybody who's gathered here. Uh, I believe it's of immense pleasure to have someone like Mr. George Koshi as the who's the chair of Siki's Employability Task Force as the moderator for the panel this afternoon. I also welcome all the panelists who are gathered here, and a special word of welcome to my friends, Dr. V. Vail Morgan, the principal of FX uh, Engineering College, and Dr. K. Jayakumar, the general manager of SCAT Group. I also welcome all the students and the faculty gathered here. And I think uh, Siki has taken a very important step along with the Francis Xavier Engineering College uh, in uh, making something that is uh, need of the hour come true. In fact, 3D printer uh, has a huge uh, uh, market potential all over the world. It's grown by bounds and leaps right from 1940s to till this date. And uh, the beauty is it's a kind of additive manufacturing, whereas uh, all the other kinds of manufacturing are also subtractive when you take your conventional things like saying or manufacturing a product on a milling machine or a lathe or a conventional engineering machine. So additive manufacturing seems to be the future and uh, we are heading for that. And uh, just to uh, say a few words about 3D printing, I believe it is uh, something that's got tremendous potential in the fields of education, especially with prototypes, duplication of uh, rare items as well as uh, medical and the chemical applications. And uh, when it comes to industry, prototyping is the number one opportunity offered by 3D printing. And along with uh, uh, specialties in the field of uh, medicine, construction for various applications. Well, 3D printing has gone to the extent of offering prosthetics and uh, body parts, uh, which is uh, very much uh, a rare commodity in the medical field. And when it comes to uh, say the field of construction, it looks like uh, 3D printing has gone a great way in, uh, in fact, making buildings and bridges uh, in certain European nations like Russia and Spain. So the future is definitely there. 3D printing also has, is, has been playing a very key role in uh, art and jewelry, and uh, the demand is definitely going to be there. With those few words, I once again welcome everybody who's gathered here and. Uh, Thank FX Engineering College and behalf of Siki for having made this today. Thank you. And uh, uh, William, you can go ahead with the rest of the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for your welcome remarks. I now uh, like to invite Dr. B. Bail Murgan, principal of Francis Heavy Engineering College, uh, to address the presentation. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, respected uh, dignitaries, uh, very good evening, one and all uh, present here. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Southern India Chamber of Commerce and Industry for organizing this program uh, for our college students, our college to online. Topics uh, for today's session is the data of the students who will take up the year. In the core field, uh, you should know about uh, the and uh, 3D printing nowadays. Uh, so, keeping this in mind, uh, this program is being organized for the benefit of uh, core engineering students, especially uh, mechanical and uh, civil engineering students. I appreciate and uh, congratulate uh, the organizers, uh, especially the MCA HOD, Madam, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Angel, Madam, for organizing this program. and. Uh, I wish this program a grand success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now I'd like to welcome Dr. Ashwini Jay Kumar, General Manager Development of CAD Group of Institutions, to deliver the felicitation address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Yeah. Is I audible, sir? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, yes, yeah. you are. Uh, yes, sir. A very, uh, a very good afternoon to all of you, um, especially uh, on behalf of Francis Xavier Engineering College. We would like to uh, thank uh, the South India Com Chamber of Commerce uh, for joining with us uh, and giving an opportunity uh, to uh, grow ourselves in collaboration with uh, SE. Uh, 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 South India Chamber of Commerce in this technological forum. Um, really, this Tech Connect session one on uh, uh, evolution, career, uh, market scalability, and potential application. Uh, it is going to be a, a good one. Uh, in this Connect, uh, I would like to uh, welcome, on, on behalf of uh, Francis Xavier Engineering College, Mr. George Koshi. And uh, Irai Mudi, Mr. Irai Mudi from uh, Healthcare, Babu Ramachandran, the founder director of Circular for Zero, and uh, mentor and advisor of uh, Aditya Consulting, and Mr. Franklin uh, for uh, 3D printing and all. Uh, Hello. We have some network issue there. So shall we continue then? Right. Yeah, I think so. Um, Probably can give a two two minutes. Let's see whether we can whether he comes back. Yeah, I think he's he's back. Did you able to hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, yes yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some connectivity issues, it seems. Um, really, uh, uh, this program this will definitely benefit our students in a greater way. Uh, so I request uh, uh, South India Chamber of Commerce to uh, join with us in such a kind of activities in many more so that our students can also be get benefited in this latest tools and technologies, which in BIBE, uh, uh, the students uh, trained in that particular domain, they can know about the technologies, what has been uh, going in in current uh, trend in the industries, and uh, which in turn support the students to get into higher level of jobs. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for giving an opportunity to connect with uh, uh, SICC uh, in this uh, way. So I would also thank uh, uh, Mr. Sanjay Gunasing, who is our uh, Governing Council member uh, of France Engineering College for giving his welcome address, as well as uh, 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 he is always uh, with uh, with hand in hand uh, in all developmental activities of our institution. Thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, valuable wishes uh, always for us. Uh, thank you, one and all. Thank my dear students. We can make use of this opportunity and get benefited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now, I'd like we'll go into the panel discussion. I'd like to introduce the moderator and the panel uh, panelists for today's uh, session. Uh, we have some eminent uh, people in the panel. So, uh, first, Mr. George Koshi. Uh, he is the chair, Siki Employability Committee, and he's the director for learning development at Siki Technology Limited. So he's an expert in learning and development specialist with more than 25 years of experience uh, backed by expert, uh, exceptional people management skills. He's also an innovative experience, learning and development professional with a rich background in learning processes, psychometric assessment, leadership, development, coaching and uh, felicitation. So he has previously worked with uh, Toma India Private Limited, Infosys, he has worked with uh, Surfion Global Solution, uh, Hyundai, Motor, uh, Hyundai Motor India Limited. So he has uh, a vast experience in uh, this sector, uh, this uh, leadership and development. Uh, we have the other panelists for today. Uh, 
Mr. Irai Modi. He is a global, he is a country head for healthcare in three rapid technologies. He is a mechanical engineer by profession and holds a master degree uh, MS by engineer in the field of additive manufacturing for medical application with more than 10 years of experience in medical image processing, biocad modeling, and additive manufacturing. So he has worked previously with Craft 3D health, Healthcare Solutions. And we have another um, panelist for today is Mr. Babu Ramachandran. is the Chief Business Development Officer, India, IG Energy Limited. Uh, and he's a founder for Circular for Zero. So he's a management professional and an entrepreneur and active in multi-dimensional streams for circular economy and industry 4.0 uh, with extensive experience in this industry. So he has also extensive experience in manufacturing industry, spanning uh, 24, 27 years of uh, over experience in this field actually. Uh, thank you, sir. We invite you also to this panel today. Uh, there is a small correction, Mr. Franklin Dutti, he couldn't join. So we have another person, uh, Mr. Srikant PJ. So he's a general manager, Metaphor 3D Print Services, which is a division of Monotech System Limited. So he currently heads the Metaphor 3D Print Additive Manufacturing Center. And uh, he has 37 years of global experience as country head. Uh, he has managed print services for UK Co. ARC Document Solutions. He was a business head for channel development for 3D printing in firm like Cat Center India Private Limited, HP Partner, USA and Tech for printers and 3D printing. So we have three eminent uh, speakers, panelists for today, uh, which will be led by the moderator, uh, Mr. Josh Koshi. Uh, over to you, sir. Uh, I request the panel, uh, because the, uh, the participants, if you have any doubts and inquiries, you can either post it in the chat box or you can have it one by one, you can ask at the end of the uh, at the end of the session. Over to you, Dr. Koshi, sir. Hey, thank you, William. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, William. And uh, I would like to thank Siki, uh, probably to have partnered with the Francis Xavier College. Uh, and probably, you know, this is really, really important for students, you know, for coming up with such informative programs, panel discussions, uh, workshops like this to help our students, you know, uh, recognize various opportunities and options in various uh, streams in their careers. Uh, I like, uh, in fact, William was uh, sharing that I personally chair the employability task force at SICI. And so this discussion really interests me a lot. Uh, the reason being, I, I believe it would help our students, uh, at least in a very infinitesimal way, it would help in in their uh, career, so um, uh, that is why I'm quite excited uh, and to do some some of these uh, uh, you know panel discussions as well some of these uh, initiatives, uh, and I'm very very delighted to be a part of this panel uh, moderating and discussing the history evolution career opportunities and uh, possible uh, growth of uh, the additive manufacturing process that is the 3D printing. Um, and for that, um, uh, let me quickly kind of talk about the panelists that we have. Uh, I was, I, in fact, I was chatting with uh, the panel members sometime back and I was saying that uh, it is easy to question, you know, I and my job is very easy. Just have some questions and probably the, the people who are going to answer. And we have kind of, uh, and William was pointed out rightly, we have eminent members in the in the in the panel um and i'm very very uh kind of excited to to introduce and probably have this chat going on discussion going on with the panel members uh, we have two panel members who are like you know evangelists of 3d printing like you no know, they are they manufacture and then we have one person who's babu who's the who would be uh, like the user of uh, uh, the 3D printing. So we have uh, a good uh, kind of a mix uh, as panel members and I'm sure that, you know, it would be a treat for all the students who are interested in, in, in understanding or probably at least uh, experimenting some of these things, you know, some of the streams that we have uh, in, the, in the advanced technology that, um, you know, we have. So, um, 
so let me quickly start. I don't want to waste uh, time, uh, you know, setting context. I think that's that's we are here to talk about 3D printing, which is additive manufacturing. And uh, I would request uh, probably the first one I, I'm going to open up to all the uh, panel members. Uh, probably each one of you can take two or three minutes time and probably share your experience in terms of uh, how they chose this field, um, the 3D printing uh, as their field, you know, in terms of that's one part and probably your experience with it. Um, any any exciting um, kind of uh, incident which had happened, anything like that, you know, would uh, uh, more personalize it and probably if you can share your thoughts on that, that's where we're going to start with this panel discussion. Yeah. So over to you. I mean, probably we don't have any rules. Anybody can take up first. So uh, over to Srikant, uh, Babu and Iraimudi. Uh I think it's not audible. So as you said, yeah, am I audible now? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, thank you so much and uh, uh, very warm welcome to all the participants and distinguished uh, uh, panelists and the uh, main moderator, Mr. George Koshi and Ms. Jai Kumar and uh, principals of the college, as well as the students and faculty at the Saint uh, Francis Xavier College. And thank you, Siki, for organizing it, and Mr. Williams as well, and our co-panelists. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, great opportunity. Uh, probably because you talked about history of 3D printing a little bit, and uh, I thought I can take the lead because I have a couple of uh, uh, information about that, which I think could be useful for the students. So to answer your question first, how did I jump into 3D printing? OK, so I'm a uh, graduate uh, of the prestigious PhD College of Technology, Coimbatore, uh, where I did my mechanical engineering in way back in 88. So when I did my engineering in 88, uh, there was a mentor, which is Dr. Radha Krishnan Nair, one of the famous uh, persons in CAD CAM and in 3D printing. They have a huge facility at 3D printing and PhD Tech, which is not there at that point of time. But the industrial setup at uh, PhD Tech helped us to gain a lot of knowledge and a little bit of specialization in CAD CAM, but may help me to jump into uh, Godrej CAD CAM at that point of view. And that was way back in early 90s. And then when I left abroad, I was completely away from CAD CAM. Uh, but into CAD CAM peripherals for a long time, for almost uh, two decades. And then when I came back to India, uh, I was almost 18 years out of India and came back to India in 2011. Uh, I was uh, having good friends in the CAD CAM industry, particularly with 3D printing. So I jumped into CAD Center, which was my first uh, uh, you know, port of call for getting into 3D print services. Uh, I found that my I was getting back to core engineering and coming out of peripherals and printing from 2D, I thought 3D was the best opportunity to take on, and therefore I jumped into 3D printing. So that is my history, but if you want me to share the history of 3D printing itself, I can share a few slides, Mr. George. Or maybe the next round? Yeah, yeah, that, that would be good. Like, you know, let's, let's uh, when we have any specific questions, we can actually present that. Let's go around one round of the kind of introduction and and then we can uh, share the presentation. Sure. So maybe uh, I can step in. Thanks, uh, uh, Srikant, uh, and of course, thanks, George. Uh, uh, you know, as uh, you know, George uh, nicely put it. Okay, now I'm a kind of uh, uh, person who has worked in the manufacturing industry, and I'm an avid user. So uh, we in the manufacturing industry, we come across. Uh, you know, we have been building up products, uh, executing big projects, and we always look for tools which make things, you know, faster, which make things better, which, of course, we need also some basic tools to make the things. Uh, so, obviously, as uh, I'm sure we will see in the further discussions that the industry grew from one point to the other. In the very early stages, what I wanted was something. I have an idea. I want to showcase it. I want to see it. I want to touch and feel it. How do I make it? So in those days, there were these things called as rapid prototyping by which some things would be made and would give us a life size uh, you know, view of how things would be. I think as things have moved, today's scenario is, uh, is hugely different and hugely evolved. And uh, we, we talk about it from an Industry 4.0 uh, 4 con uh, context. And in Industry 4.0, there are many technologies but it is additive manufacturing, it is, which is the one which makes something from uh, idea stage to actual product. The rest of the things like robotics or uh, you know, connected computing, uh, cloud, 
they're all dealing with information and uh, analytics etc but this is additive manufacturing is the one real thing uh, which makes you the real product in your hand so i think uh, from that perspective it has opened up a new uh, paradigm or a new avenue for uh, engineers uh, and manufacturing people like us yeah all right thank you thank you babu like you know i am rightly said you know uh, in fact um, though we talk about uh, uh, the concepts of 3d printing it is important to talk about applications as well wherever where we have applied and that's when you know this stream is going to really uh, come up and grow as well rightly said thank you yeah uh, yeah right yes uh, thank you william for the this wonderful opportunity and also i think uh, hi i think am i audible hope yes yeah yes <laughs> i just want to wish the students okay the thing is uh, the reason i am into 3d printing especially in healthcare is okay i am a mechanical engineer i did my uh, ug in coimbatore krishna college and uh, at the time i know only one chapter is called rapid prototyping so i got a opportunity to do my masters uh, in anna university chennai so it's a regular 3d printing uh, you know uh, kind of research that we started and then i got to know about healthcare that is a new thing is going on there are a lot of research is going on then i i i changed my research into the healthcare application little bit and i would like to highlight one incidence that change because the reason i am today what kind of work i am doing is uh, healthcare there are two things at the time there is only software uh, people are using it for designing developing and all so i got a opportunity to work with uh, one surgery case uh, in government uh, college uh, in gdc or chennai gdc and the spinal cases so we i got a opportunity to plan for a spinal uh, maybe you would call it as a we call it as scoliosis maybe it's a kind of tb 6 year old girl affected by tb she is keep on bending every year when it's growing and there's a serious problem they have to put some screws and plates on that so there are a lot of revision surgeries is going in a regular thing so the surgeon dr karunagaran uh, he came up with the idea why can't we uh, do the virtual plan then that's that's make us very interesting so we started segmenting bone planning lot of stuffs you know, and then we we come up with idea why can't we create a guide that is called we we learn in engineering jigchan pictures so we just started thinking on it then we started planning it we don't have idea we don't have any clue whether it is going to success or not and uh, when i see the spinal bone it's it's a size of this so we really wondered whether it is a real or something scale up what is going to happen so luckily i got a opportunity to enter into the theater first time and it was very you know we can't stand in the theater you know in the first time you it will get a lot of feelings and uh, it's all good so we are able to operate it in a success level so that's particular moment is uh, it's, you know it changed my life so instead of working on you know softer something that we do this is changing the human life and i can see the different till I, still today it has happened in 2012 till today i am in touch with the surgeon and also we are following the patient uh, the young girl she was good and well and that changes the whole surgical platform the surgeon has reduced 50% of surgical time there is no failures they don't want to involve this x rays that will also affect the surgeon in the cancer that leads to the cancer also that complete things and it's a first kind of surgery in asia and uh, that moment has changed me maybe that's that's that moment is enough for us to understand uh, how this technology is needed in healthcare so probably uh, it 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 becomes in a you know, very important this 3d printing especially in multiple industries healthcare is growing very fast and it's changing the whole life maybe after covid probably we will discuss in further no uh, points thank you excellent i mean in fact uh, that is very very interesting you know in fact when you can share stories like this incidents like this it does really help uh in understanding the importance of technology and and uh, here you are talking about changing lives uh, of people um and uh, using technology and and uh, using 3d technology which came pretty i mean i don't know how when it started probably few year a decade ago possibly i don't know the when it started and probably so you can talk through light on that as well but it is pretty interesting to see you know a technology which has evolved so fast and probably it is helping and saving lives uh, it's pretty interesting to know and uh, somebody was talking about francis xavier college and and they shortened it as fx 
uh, the word FX for me, it's like, you know, it's, it's basically used in sound engineering and even video editing, you know. So I was thinking the FX is added to sound and uh, audio, audio video to actually improve the quality and sound and things like that. And I believe that, you know, this, uh, this panel discussion that we are having is a small FX that we have in, in probably introducing to the students and probably they'll gain something out of this. You know, that's, that's something that I wanted to. Luckily like they to, are in weekend. <laughs> so they can think a lot. They are in weekend. They are in weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They can think a lot during their weekend as well. That's right. Uh, right. Okay. So uh, let me uh, move into the first question and I'm, I, I, I probably call out um, um, Srikant. Um, uh, so we've been talking about additive manufacturing and uh, subject. I mean, probably there's another type of manufacturing which is used in lathe machines, and probably I, you can talk talk about it. So, what is the difference between uh, pro, the, the movement or transition from traditional manufacturing to smart manufacturing? So, if you can probably throw some light on that, and how 3D printing is uh, probably going to be helpful in this regard. If you can uh, share some uh, thoughts on that, uh, Srikanth, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so before I go into that, uh, what, can I do, talk a little bit about the history a little bit? Or? Yes, 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 yes. So yeah. just to get a heads up for the students so they know where they are right now and what is the industry doing in a couple of slides. Uh, so can I just uh, share my slide? Feel uh, free. Yes, yes, Srikanth. So can you see my slide? Are you able to see my slide? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, as, as, as we all know that I represent uh, Metamorph 3D Print Services and 3D Monotech is our company and Monotech Systems Private Limited, the parent company, which is into printing and packaging for over 23 years. So I'm very happy to share the uh, small snapshots or snippets of what, what are the areas where we can. Uh, yeah. So. Looking at the hype cycle, there is a, a long way as you were talking about the history, uh, Mr. George, it started way back in 1983. Invention of uh, SLA 3D system started way back in 83. So it's almost like 30, uh, you can say almost close to 40 years now when 3D printing was actually invented. So it's a long way. But the real, in, the real invention of uh, all the, the acceleration happened in the 80s. So somewhere in 87, there was an invention of SLS technology by EOS systems. And then later on in uh, FDM by Stratasys in 89, and it went on to become a hype in 2010 uh, and so on. So I can just uh, shorten it some of them by saying that 2005, there was desktop 3D printing uh, by a company called Reprap. And then 2007, the rise of uh, 3D printing service bureaus started. So people like us, like Metamorph, our service bureaus started uh, booming in 2007, where a lot of uh, uh, independent entrepreneurs, even students, kind of people who come out of engineering and service uh, people can start service bureaus and make a living on 3d printing so today it's greater than ever for the students to come out of engineering colleges and actually uh, develop a, a lifeline or you can say a livelihood out of 3d printing that is the extent to which it started but in 2007 it was a struggle but today it's not a struggle it's a much more easier way to start into 3d printing services but before that uh, it also became a consumer kind of a product over the period of 2009 and 2011 and in 2011 and 12, there was a mass accessibility of 3D printing. And from 2013 to 15, you had a widespread adoption of uh, plastic uh, 3D printing uh, into tooling, jigs and fixtures. So moving from rapid prototyping, 3D printing also came into tooling and jigs and fixtures. I'll explain a little bit about the additive and the, uh, the traditional manufacturing, which you asked me, or the smart, uh, between the difference between smart and uh, normal manufacturing or traditional manufacturing. Just to continue this, about 2015 to 16, there's a widespread, widespread adoption of metal 3D printing. And in and around 2016 to 18, the plastic 3D printing started becoming used, uh, a good use for low volume end use parts. So from rapid prototyping, just not by doing prototyping, but people are able to use actually end use parts, real parts, which you can actually print out of 3D printers. For example, I have this part here, which is completely printed on an SLA technology and it is finished and paint and it is ready to be you know, used in uh, real life if you want. So you can actually fix it wherever you think it needs to be fixed, except in terms of fast movement, this part can work very well. I can see that it's quite hard enough and it is also quite good to be used here. So that is the way the 3D printing has evolved. And from 2018 onwards, there's a widespread adoption of 
low volume end use part production and you can see that the hype has gone from somewhere in 2013 a little bit dip and then in 2020 it has become a reality 2018 19 and then during covid as well it has become a reality and people are now moving forward from rapid prototyping to manufacturing of end use parts and also uh, if you look at boeing if you look at uh, you know ge or if you look at airbus all of these companies are now able to use 3d printing as even spares in their aircrafts uh, for example airbus they don't no longer ship uh, you know spare parts or even some plastic parts required in the aircraft when they are parked in hangars let's say a part breaks in a hangar and they want to fit it now they don't have the stock of the part they actually have a code in the cloud which is deco which is kind of uh, you know downloaded from the cloud platform and at the hangar there is a 3d printer sitting and the part is printed at the aircraft hangar and fitted to the aircraft and the aircraft is ready to fly in 24 to 48 hours so that is a speed where it is a distribution of 3d printers and hangars and actually the part is getting printed at the point of need so from rather than printing somewhere or uh, printing in large factories stocking them in uh, airbus in france and uh, shipping it across and waiting for a long time and the aircraft hangar being expensive uh, you know parking space all of that is now disappeared now you have parts coming straight from the cloud platform you're able to print it and actually uh, use it real time so that is how this uh, industries have evolved and the history has come so if you go to the next uh, part of that uh, hype uh, just to just to give you the heads up on the industry size or the market value the forecast for 3d printing is that in 2020 uh, it is about 17 uh, billion and in, in dollars and in 2025 to 26 it is going to touch close to 37.2 billion dollars that's a huge potential for the students sitting out there almost doubling the market value which means there's a whole lot of industries going to develop a whole lot of indian industry is going to adopt 3d printing and the students coming out have a huge opportunity to get into the 3d printing space and actually work in that space with the you know in design in manufacturing in actually getting core jobs into what they want to do with smart manufacturing so no longer they need to sweat in in terms of lathes or you know foundries or all of those things they are now can sit in it environments actually in ac rooms in it environments i'm sitting in one such facility where I'm behind me there's a huge facility of 18 3d printers sitting and all of these 3d printers manufacture day in and day out and i'm sitting in an it environment where i have an office space but at the back of behind me is a factory a digital smart factory manufacturing 3d printed parts in all almost like 18 different 3d printers so that is a change today students can see which was not possible uh, earlier so the the future is very good and if you look at the kind of parts we are printing we are printing prototyping parts 50 percent this is from the survey and about 30 percent is about jigs and fixtures and 29 to 30 percent you can say and and about aesthetic functional end use parts 20 percent so if you look at 10 years back it will not be this kind of a graph but today the pie chart is showing almost 20 percent of parts are end use parts so that is going to grow and the rapid prototyping was much larger before but now it's only about 47 percent and the rest of them are coming into jigs tools fixtures as well as end use parts so, so Srikant, one question here, like, you know, probably Ray Moody, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the chart that you showed, uh, probably if you take healthcare, all the, uh, the implants that you have, where would that figure in here? The implants? Uh, that comes in the functional end use part. Functional end use parts, right? Yeah, so, yeah. all right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. So the functional end use parts is also growing in terms of percentage. So if you look at the global uh, figure, it's 20 percent. But within the 20 percent, I think healthcare is dominating still predominantly quite a bit, uh, apart from the other industries as well, aerospace and defense as well. And if you look at the number of parts people are printing, the, the range is about 20, the low volume. So the students today can come out and start small factories and digital factories where you can daily print you know 10 parts and have a sustainable business model where you can survive making about if 10 parts equals to 200 parts by end of the month and those 200 parts would give you a livelihood or a business to actually run and that is the way it is and some of the industries are moving towards uh, 50 parts or 100 parts and 1000 parts and so on and so forth so depending on the investment you make and depending on the kind of 3d printer you have you can really go to the next level as well just to give you the uh, area so today 3d printing is going to real production run so what i'm talking here about is not rapid prototyping it's not about just uh, parts but real production runs
and i think that's that's little bit what is kind of uh, uh, summarizing what i'm saying right now in the first round so these are the possibilities there's an increasingly more end use metal parts being printed 3d printing will continue to mature and become more affordable and all of these are given by industries i'm not quoting it from my uh, by own knowledge but these are these are coming from companies like honeywell boeing siemens ag autodesk and uh, airbus helicopters uk so these are companies which are stating these statements where they are authentically telling you 3d become 3d printing will become cheaper and consequently will be used for more applications it will hybrid manufacturing a combination of additive and subtractive will also make bigger strides so today you are talking about difference of uh, you know uh, uh, you know normal manufacturing or traditional manufacturing so we are having hybrid manufacturing where you can do your machining in your cnc machine you can actually do the 3d printed parts and actually do the machining in cnc both are integrated in a single machine and those are the possibilities today so smart manufacturing is evolving where you can actually print in a traditional way where, or rather traditional manufacturing and do your uh, real parts in 3d printing so the combination is also evolving i think with this it gives you a kind of overview of where we are ex uh, uh, you know evolving and the last line talks about exotic materials so students can also look at a lot of exotic materials in the future material sciences is developing uh, 3d printing um, uh, metals are developing composites are developing so you have a number of areas i think the students have such a wide area if there are 200 students sitting there each one of them have got a gold mine to follow excellent excellent thank you thank you srikanth in fact uh, the, the the days are all for the gig economy uh, and uh, you actually pave them a way to actually run a small business also like you know so we can they you can uh, manufacture something and you also talked about something called the low volume end used product as well so uh, very soon uh, like you said you know after hybrid manufacturing comes like you know wherein both the uh, additive and subtractive manufacturing if they come together i think oh, we will be making big strides on this excellent uh, in fact, I was also thinking about when you talked about various sciences, I saw I also felt that 3D printing is more like an integration of all sciences, you know, uh, you have uh, material science, you have uh, design, it's like art and science put together, like uh, you have, um, you have uh, softwares that you have to learn, you have to learn about uh, mechatronics, mechanical and electronics, everything put together. So it's a combination of all uh, technologies that you know come into 3d printing is what i understand so it's a it's a very exciting field and i'm sure that you know students would actually learn uh, and uh, probably do some small uh, become an entrepreneur as well in this in this area and anyway the next next question that i would like uh, on this area is like in more in terms of applications let let me call upon iray i mean he, in fact he he started um, uh, sorry, uh, I'll, I'll let me talk about Babu. I left. You know, so let me let me call upon Babu to talk about uh, the various applications because he's the most user of uh, 3D printing. So after probably talking about various applications, let's let us go from macro to kind of a uh, very specific where wherein we really can talk about uh, the healthcare. So what are some of the various applications that you have dealt with? And also give me an instance where you have uh, solved a problem. So imagine that I'm sure that, you know, with, with normal manufacturing, you might have, have had a problem and uh, it, it would have been difficult. And so probably you, you adopted uh, and start, I mean, used additive manufacturing to, to solve the problem. If there's any instance like that, you can share that as well. Sure. Hey, first, first of all, very good, excellent slides from Srikanth and uh, it's good to see the history uh, and uh, what he has illustrated about the application or what is the current uh, prospect. Uh, uh, you know, the manufacturing side, and we have seen this uh, industry grow. Maybe also we followed the hype cycle. We were very excited. Then suddenly uh, today we are seeing a transformation of the solution, uh, which is coming from it. You know, I mentioned in the earlier thing that we were very excited to see rapid prototyping. Today we are excited to see that we can actually productionize uh, manufacturing using 3d printing so this is uh, there are so many uh, new avenues like this which has happened uh, one of the uh, key things about this uh, technology so as engineers as manufacturers we are looking to use various tools when i say tools i mean also management tools software tools and also physical tools 
So now 3D printing, let's say it's it's a kind of a tool. It can be, uh, it is a management tool. It is a software tool as well as it gives uh, physically things in hand. So it is also a, 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 a you know, a, a manufacturing tool. So uh, that's the real potency of a 3D printing. Uh, and uh, when, when we look at something, we have a design in mind. We try to create the design. There is a lot of engineering involved in it. And then there is a lot of engineering to productionize the design. So once you made a 3D design, you made all the, uh, you know, design of the machinery, etc. Then now you have to go to manufacture it. So the manufacturing is also a big amount of engineering. You need to, uh, there is a manufacturing engineering, there is a tooling, fixturing, they already mentioned. And then you finally get to the actual production of those parts. So there is a huge timeline, which is, which used to be conventionally uh, there in an automotive industry or the railway industry where I've seen, this is like a several years. These are huge projects, which are huge amount of money at stake. Uh, you know, it's into millions of uh, billions and millions of it. And finally, we end up making something. Inevitably, there are iterations, there are changes to be made and we have to iterate. So this is, uh, if, if you take a railway project, it's a public project. It's a project which can take five to 10 years to meet, uh, to make uh, people's life easier. And there are uh, iterations to be done on it. The product has to be improved. So you can imagine what the public goes through. Some of you who are living in these cities where there is uh, metro construction going on, etc., you can see what is going on. But behind this, there is a lot of stuff on this. So were 3D printing, I'm, I'm saying it is, it's just started. It's not yet uh, that it is totally revolutionary, uh, revolutionized everything, but it has just started that it can break through in terms of this life cycle, you have an idea, you create a design, and using 3D printing, you can actually productionize it. Maybe it's a prototype to start with, or as a gentleman said, you can actually even make production parts on it. So uh, you, as soon as you have the design, you can actually produce it in a few hours time. And this can be checked, tested, it can be applied, you can have a look and feel of it. And finally, you can go ahead with uh, maybe an iteration of it, or you can say this is ready for production. You can start producing it. Uh, I have a very uh, interesting scenario when we had to, you know, do an engineering change on a part because of, you know, failures which were happening in the market. And, you know, engineering change is a huge process. It will take months to decide, and then again, a few months to make it, and then finally go to the market after two years. Problem, the customer is living with the problem, suffering with the problem by the time you take all these uh, things to come to it. And with uh, this kind of uh, 3D printing, actually it, uh, we could break through it. We had the problem, we could analyze it, we figured out, okay, this is the design we need to do, a modification we need to do. And in a, days, uh, in a couple of days time, we could actually make the prototype or make the part, physically apply it and see that it actually works. So what used to take uh, nine months or 12 months of uh, engineering change, was done in a few weeks time. So you can imagine the benefit or the, uh, uh, you know, the things the customer would have experienced, like rather than living with a problem, they have a solution which is tested, which is up. Uh, we are confident that it will work and therefore we can apply it and give it to them to say, okay, now you can run your commercial vehicle with this uh, new part. You know, this is the potential of this. I'm sure uh, Irai or uh, Srikan have many other uh, you know, beautiful examples of it, but this is uh, in, a, in a simple example, this would be a huge, uh, uh, thing which can happen. Another example which I have, and I come from an automotive industry, also railway industry, where we are making a design which a lot of people experience. There is a touch and feel element to it. There is a tactile element to it people want to see, but you don't know whether it is good for them. They will like it or not. What is their impression of it? And if they don't have a good impression, this is going to mar the product for, a, for its life in the lifetime. So what happens with automotive? There are people which uh, we make mock-ups which people evaluate, they look at it, how does it touch and feel, how does it really look in a cockpit of a car, or even for a model in a railway, like uh, we make a mock-up of a coach, which a passenger will be sitting in, he will be holding the handle and standing, so how does it look for them, how's the aesthetics, how's the colors? This is possible today in very, very short life uh, time because of these kind of 3D printing technology, because you can actually use it to create the surfaces, use it to create the real life level of uh, you know, products which they can touch and feel and uh, they can experience the dimensions of it. So this is also something which normally would cost a lot of time. Time is much more costly. Also a lot of money because you have to make the tools 
you have to engineer it then you have to make the tools which will make this and then finally you have to make these parts so you are going to spend 3 to 4 times of money on that whereas in this uh, 3d printing you can actually uh, do the design and uh, send it uh, across the channel to somebody who is having a you know 3d printer in his backyard like mr shrikanth is having and they will print out and say okay here's a part you know so this these are things which radically revolutionize the manufacturing uh, sector excellent yeah. thank thank you bab so so what you're saying is like you know you it can be uh, 3d printing uh, is mostly used in prototyping i mean earlier days and then nowadays you are starting to use as as products and use products itself Absolutely. And, and mostly in automotive industry like you have experienced and in various other states. so education uh, automotive and various other manufacturing fields as well probably yeah. uh, 3d printing is uh, is applied we, we do uh, see so as 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 we can said also there are many industries it's, uh, i would say a few examples of medical automotive other but today uh, it's been used in the furniture industry it is used uh, in fashion and there is a lot of uh, usage and applications which are coming in the defense sector ah uh, right? okay yeah. so it's mostly used in defense sectors yeah uh, very nice very happy to hear that um so so just jumping to irai probably we can take one specific application where he is actually an expert which is the healthcare and uh, he's i'm sure that he is so excited and happy that he's saving lives um any any uh, examples from uh, from your end you know your experience where you are so happy that you have designed something on on a 3d printer and probably yeah, used as implants um, for a, for a particular patient though, though you have gave though you gave one example prior is there anything else that uh, you can let us know uh, and uh, what is the future of medical 3d printing as well so those are those are some things that i would want you to answer yes sure uh, probably before uh, answering your question i would like to give a small idea about uh, what we are doing in medical probably in uh, students they may not have aware so how it works how we can use it probably everyone when they are finishing the final year they have a hope of having a placing in core you no know, companies i want to you know build a engine or something like that so of course it's equally important so the the most complicated machine is the human part so and we are not operating it but we are understanding and we are you know uh, assisting doctors to make it in a uh, you know a more easier way without failures and uh, you know whenever you talk about the surgery especially in orthopedic surgery uh, hip implants knee implants they, they 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 know the revision surgery so when they are putting a implant they know when they are going to it going to fail they have approximate idea when maybe this patient will fail in 5 years 10 years and uh, by using 3d printing technology uh, I would say like before entering into, into the theater <clears throat> doctors will will know the complete idea about the patient patient anatomy internal structure where i have to put the plate where i have to put the screws where i am going to remove the some defectivity or some cancer or something so they have a complete idea and they know the result also so that is what a beauty of 3d printing has given and it's put to say like how it works i think we all know reverse engineering so we have a current any component or any engine or something we do the scanning we'll take the digital file and we redesign or correct the deformity problem whatever it is and we analyze it do the prototype and we print it and put it back to the thing the same way we are taking the patient ct mri data we have a software called medical image processing will help you to convert our patient data probably you, everyone has seen the ct scan the 2d sheet black and white sheet so that's a one particular sectional view so the software will give you the compile so i can convert the 3d model of a uh, uh, my skull, anyone's skull, if I have the data, uh, including the internal information. So it's not just a skull. So I want to know where the nerves, blood vessels, everything together. So I will take the patient 3D data and I will find the problem. We will do the complete virtual surgery. We just want to reciprocate the on theater surgery into the digital form. Of course, completely the guidance of the surgeon uh, and uh, as per their instruction, we do the complete planning. We design something like, you know, uh, uh, models, guides, or implant, as you mentioned correctly, uh, implants, whatever it is required for the specific patient, we do that and we will do the uh, maybe the, you know, we can also call it a prototype, but we, we print a model in some other material to test and validate it. And we print it in actual material like titanium 
uh, cobalt chromium also nowadays we have a ceramic lot of things are there so we print it and we operate it to the patient so that's what the whole cycle and mainly as you mentioned like uh, stories uh, maybe i yes of course spinal uh, case is one of the stories and i have been working with um, more on maxofacial and we call it as a patient specific implant we are not working on standard so we we work on patient specific as we call it as a subway we have more customized on our food but uh, it is good to make customized on patient like so that is what we are intending the doctors no bore standard implants and uh, they are just feeding the implant removing the bone almost like a carpentry work so our ideology is to make design for the patient specific and we just want to fit the implant no more you know bone removal uh, minimum invasive so the less surgical uh, constraints and all the stuff and it start from model guides for them to correct and especially implant uh, maybe i would like to say like my first implant uh, in 2015 earlier of 2015 that's the first case we we designed a, a jaw correction and uh, it's first time for me also as a student uh, once i finish till today i am a student we are keep on learning it but at the time we never hear about we don't have a reference uh, we used to get doctors input we used to get the standard input because if i want to develop something customized i at least i need some idea at the time no customized implant i would say in the world level world level they have done one or two cases and there is no success uh, full story whether it is good bad or something so we put our thoughts we tried would say the first implant i have done 30 different designs 30 uh -huh. different designs we validated we keep on brainstorming luckily uh, my my first company is a uh, doctor based company they are maxofacial surgeon top surgeons are there so we discuss we brainstorm ourselves they used to give me input of what they need and uh, i can't design what i i i i, I imagine what it, it's, there are a lot of complications i can't put a bigger plates i have to constrain and all so we designed we finally we understand okay this is what we go with and in Ma april uh, 10th i guess april 10th we operated 2015 we operated our first surgery in chennai okay we are super excited and uh, it's it's a, it's a live conference we put a live thing and uh, the first implant has been placed and it was 2 3 weeks i was somewhere else and i think and we got a call from the surgeon we are taking out the implant okay so everything down so we it's a failure it's a super failure i would say and uh, everybody is saying like okay it's failure because of the technology because of material they are claiming lot of stuff okay so we said okay there is no implant more so we can't do because as a company is the first thing it's it's it became a big issue i think ethically there is a lot of things are there so we are very perfect on it but we we can't able to find out where is the failure is happened what is the problem we are validating with the we printed in uh, luan probably a 3d system it's a big printer so they give a certification everything and uh, as a end of the story we 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 didn't stop it we understand say okay we have to we if you want to understand the failure we have to start doing again then we started doing the next team plan next team plan then we didn't get a failure then finally the doc one of the doctor mentioned here this is not a failure of design or planning it's a failure of patient because even you can design a super master implant whatever it is but uh, each and every human have their problem the particular patient they don't have a proper uh, soft tissue it got exposed even no implant will work on him so it's not like a one solution it's not like one product and especially in healthcare we are not product specific we are solution specific it's not like i am going to give implant everyone some cases we can't do that so that is what we understand okay luckily i have done 300 cases and i have stopped doing services for last 3 years but i am working with lot of customers and after covid uh, the black fungus 3d printing is it's revolutionized the whole workflow uh, the complete a lot of youngsters are jaw they are losing their maxillary jaws and all the 3d is the only solution and, um, <clears throat> and that's how it will work and especially would say like uh, we are more into the solution specific and uh, each and every story is very important for us because uh, uh, i have attended 100 more more than 100 surgeries in theater and uh, every time I, i i will be happy and i will find my mistake so we are keep on uh, no, improving things 
very 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 rightly said uh, and you right in fact from the story that you said uh, there are a lot of learning you know for for students for all of us uh, you know fail early to succeed later you know though though it was not a failure from your end but it's still uh, considered as a failure because you know it does not you know probably um, go well with the patient uh, yes. A lot of things, you know, for me, it was like uh, here listening to a hi-fi scientific movie, um, you know, talking about all these the terms, um, the mandibular, uh, you know, jaw and things like that. I, I know probably, you know, I mean, in, in fact, I don't know how many, how many students would have listened to or probably seen this uh, episode called Bones. Um, there is this uh, series, you know, in on Netflix or Amazon, I don't know, called Bones, where this lady is an anthropologist and can name all the bones. Probably, right? If I let you do that, probably you can also name all the bones of the of a of a human body. Uh, not because you're a you're a you're a doctor or somebody like that, but more because you know you are an engineer and uh, probably giving giving solutions for implants as well. So pro that's a good. Good in th I mean, good thing, you know, probably you learn a lot, you know, not just from your own streams, but a lot of other streams as well. And especially it's a multidisciplinary. Correct, so correct. multidisciplinary will always excite us. That keep us run every day, learn every day. That's that's really true. Okay, let me let me uh, probably for the benefit of the students, like you know, you, in fact, uh, Srikanth was talking about you know becoming an entrepreneur. What should they spend? Like you know, kind of a minimum. Uh, um, uh, a, a kind of money that they should uh, invest uh, to buy a basic um, 3D printer. What would be the amount and probably and probably what would be the, the most high tech 3D printer that is available in the market? If you can actually share some thoughts on that, anybody can take that yeah. question. Let me, like, let me you know, just uh, jump in because it's easy for me to show that. So what I will do is uh, uh, to get them excited a little bit. I will actually show them some live printers or at least the printers which we have, the kind of printers they can expect to have in their uh, shops. I think they should start imagining today that they can have these kind of printers at their if, if, I, if I need to buy it for my home, like, you know, if I can set up something at my home, what would be the printer? Yeah, well, that they uh, see, if I if you talk to engineering students to set it up at their home, I am a little bit a bit, uh, I would say, uh, I mean, paranoid when I hear this because you can have a toy, maybe a small kid can do some toys, but if the real world of manufacturing comes in, it is no longer a toy. It has to be precise and it has to be little engineered properly. So okay. just, just to answer that question a little bit, let me show you some of the printers we have and what kind of uh, setups are there and what kind of costs we're talking about and then probably take you to the lowest desktop model, which is possibly available in the marketplace. You can have your DIY kits which are available for even 20,000 to 30,000 and 40,000. But those machines are, so to typically answer your question, you can have a machine as low as, uh, a 3D printer as low as 20,000 or 30,000 also. But they will not give you the kind of manufacturing we are expecting to have in terms of either prototyping or you to get even parts like these. These are expensive products. But in this category, there are many machines which have come up today which can do the uh, job of actually uh, under manufacturing. So just, just if you allow me to just take you through some of the things which we can do. If you, uh, if your students are really serious, you know, I think they are all engineering students when they come out of engineering now, they want to become startup because they get a lot of opportunities in the third year and fourth year. And today I see students from IITs and engineering colleges very serious when we attend these uh, meetings from Siki or Fiki or, uh, you know, startup events and all this, we see engineering students coming in and they are very keen and interested. So what is that they should look for? They should not look for a toy printer or they should not look for a small printer, but because the nature of investment is given today by the, in the, by the uh, uh, you know, uh, funds available from the government of Tamil Nadu, uh, from the central government, from the funds available from defense sector, uh, various sectors, uh, I think a lot of input is given. So funding is not a problem. And so they should not really bother about uh, buying a 20,000 rupees printer or 30,000. But what instead they should focus is what kind of solutions can we offer? Now, if you look at our solution in 3D print services, this is a slide. We have simple solutions, very effective solutions from prototyping to final complex parts. So I believe that the student coming out into and really serious about in services, 
first can have a training program which we also conduct in 24 hours 48 hours and all that so these training programs allow them to learn all these technologies whether it's thermoplastics uh, metal uh, wax ceramics uh, all of these uh, technologies we have and we have in place right here in my office they are sitting here uh, technologies from thermoplastics to uh, uh, uv and uh, metals and wax as well so and we also have uh, leading uh, partnerships so people can first learn additive manufacturing through the college in a very systematic way so they get a complete structured uh, agenda about what they want to do and once they know that they have, they then can do projects in three third year or fourth year they can take their projects and come to us for an industrial grade printing also but when the project has become acceptable to the market they can even bring an industry case do a project here and actually go for manufacturing and when they are at that stage of manufacturing they can invest on a 3d printer now, what sort of printers we're talking about and what sort of applications i quickly run through that if you man if i can do so please 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 yeah, so if you look at the applications using 3d printing with plastics and composites and metal printing. I'm going to cover these three important slide parts in very few slides, just about three slides, four slides. Uh, so plastics is predominantly used. And then we have composites. Composites is nothing but carbon fiber for the benefit of students, carbon fiber and reinforced fiber, and then metal printing. And metal printing is, I have a simple small metal printed part here. It is as good as a, uh, you know, completely proper metal printed stainless steel part. And this is really can be used in uh, any in 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 engineering industry. So these are the machines we are talking about here. So the first slide is the desktop uh, industrial grade, but desktop printer, which can come in somewhere like 10 lakhs or so, or 10 to 12 lakhs kind of uh, setup. And these machines can print materials like PLA, polylactic acetate, ABS, uh, Pro HD, which is based on temperatures and PETG and any other material on demand. And if you look at the left side of my corner, there are the parts which can be brought out of these 3D printers. And if you see the right side, you have the machines as big as uh, the one which you can see on the right side corner, one meter by one meter 3D printer in our facility, which can allow you to print even furniture or even parts like what this gentleman is placing on the 3D printer. So you have across one meter and height one meter parts can be printed. And the one on the top right corner can print the precision parts little smaller than the bigger printer, but at 500 to 1000 by dimension, 500 by 1000. So you can see the kind of range of printers, but this is just the beginning. This is just plastics technology of FDM, we call it, of fused deposit modeling. And these desktop printers can do this and a less price. You can get machines even you know, to one lakh or two lakhs or even less. But we don't advise that for students who are serious in to become entrepreneurs because they need to practice what they want to do in the future. And with the fundings today available, it's easy to get into this kind of business and make a survivable living even within 12 months. So their return of investment is as low as one year if they can invest on small printers but the larger printers if you see here the one meter by one meter printer for example is in the range of about 60 lakhs 60 lakhs plus uh, and the other printers also about 40 to 50 lakhs and then if you move on to the next uh, stage of printing uh, we have here uh, the materials with, in thermoplastics and these machines are a little bit more expensive they come from a company called 3d systems we have materials like high temperature materials biocompatible materials like what we can use in healthcare, elastomeric materials, rigid ABS materials, flexible materials, uh, polycarbonate, transparent materials and wax and so on and so forth. So if you look at the left side, we have all of those applications here. They have, we have wax here, we have elastomeric, we have uh, high temperature material, we have rigid uh, ABS, we have a transparent material here, which can be used in automotive. You can see the wheels, the rims, and all of these parts. They are very precision parts, and within hours, these parts are coming out of 3D printers. And if you look at the right, these are functional 3D printers, which print functional serious production parts. And these are like uh, what you see, you see on the left uh, side is the, the orange color one is called the figure four, which can do a technology called direct li uh, digital light projection and DLP technology, which can do micro parts like switches, end use parts, which can really be done in small quantities. And you have the, on the right side, a uh, machine called Fapro W2P, which are again for precision parts. And these are, these are parts which can go up to 25 microns if you look at the, in, uh, the accuracy. And on the right side bottom, we have the NJP multi-jet printing technology and something called the SLA technology. These two are good for the kind of part you see that the white color part uh, could be a manifold or an engine exhaust or these are smooth parts with good surface finish, good surface quality. And if you print such a good part and give it to the industry, you can 
charge them quite a good reasonable value and today automotive industries are coming forward to do such parts and they are on demand coming to us almost on a daily basis where we can do these parts and earn those parts they're willing to pay for it they're willing to do these parts they're willing to reiterate again and they want these parts on a fast manner and we are able to turn around this in less than 24 hours or even sometimes uh, it may be a little longer but all of these are possible with these printers Excellent. Uh, thanks, thanks, Rekhan. That was this was very useful on on the various types of three D printers and uh, also giving us uh, an estimated cost as well. Um, this is quite. Uh, I am sure that the students would actually think about it in probably making this as a as a business, uh, getting funds from various places. And you also mentioned there are uh, you know uh, funds available as well if you can if you want to actually get into this uh career um just just a fun thought you know after seeing all these things you know this is a question to uh, srikant and irai because you have uh, you know probably you have touched a printer a lot of 3d printers and i'm sure about that you are, you would have printed a lot of uh, stuff out of it uh 3d i mean models and things like that and i was just thinking you know while you were talking is there a way that you can actually 3d print some food that we can eat i don't know uh, uh, but then uh, I just want you to ask, uh, want to ask you this question, like, is there anything that you have, you know, done something crazy out of a 3D printer, anything that you dreamt of, okay, I should 3D print something, like, is there anything like that? Yeah, well, uh, see, uh, in my office right here, we have a, a small uh, piece here, out of, uh, this is a small, we started like a fun, but it became like an idol. So this is, if you believe, this is looking like silver. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. If I just show it to anybody, this is just a silver part, but this is actually printed on DLP technology in plastic. And that's a god. That's a goddess, right? Yes, exactly. It's a, it's Saraswati knowledge uh -huh. because we're all with students. I thought we can show the goddess of knowledge, and this is printed in DLP technology in few hours, and it is uh, silver coated. And now this can be given as a memorable gift to anybody who. Uh, in the corporate world or even from any other uh, you know wedding gift i actually gifted this to my daughter for her birthday and to today i'm giving a 3d printed part as a gift instead of giving something else so that is right. a fun part when, when when i wanted something crazy you're actually showing something very serious your religion is very no, serious but I, will, I will also <laughs> tell you something crazy uh, because you asked for it we have a chocolate 3d printer so we we actually have it here right here but it's not it's not still uh, operational fully but we do have a 3d printer which is uh, going to print chocolate in fact the md daughter wanted to uh, have some uh, you know serious i mean fun part and we do have a chocolate printer so that's the fun part so yeah yeah then then my dream come true you can actually 3d print some food absolutely absolutely we can print <laughs> chocolates actually uh, excellent Irai, anything from your end anything that you've done crazy out of 3d printers No, I think you're on mute. Uh... Okay, so uh, we try to print a globe on metal. What, uh, and what is it? A whole globe. The globe. globe. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we also put it in our exhibitions uh, that almost it's in the size of, uh, almost in the height of A4 size. Oh, okay. And it's a, a proper size. globe. And the funny part is we printed in titanium. One of the comfiest. Wow. How heavy was that? It's not heavy. It's a light. Titanium is not heavy. Oh, titanium is yeah, not it's, it's not a solid it's a hollow and we ah. put up a lot of lattice structures so actually we we little funny uh, we want to convey the technology and the feasibility of metal printing uh, lattices we call it the complex structures and all stuff we put everything on the the globe things and we printed it it's it's a rotatable it's movable but it's a single part all right so, so and uh, everybody the... everybody is like into education and serious stuff like you know i was thinking so something. But, uh, this is uh mr george in front of me here is a full color uh you can say a fun part to a kid and this is fully 3d printed in one go in color full color and then within few hours in a machine called color jet printing or cjp technology and this is one and this is another one this is actually our md and this is a very a very big industry today and that's again for students this is a very good industry where they can actually get in and do uh, services and fun. Where here people are talking about scanning your photograph, uh, just a bust. Where just we need a photo from the front and the side, and we are able to convert it into a stitch it into a model, and it's a half bust and it's 3D printed with skin tones and everything in directly from the machine. We don't do any post processing except just cleaning and airbrushing, and it's a fully 3D printed part. 
and this is another area and this industry is called the human figurines and this human figurines is now popular for weddings cup wedding couples and a lot of areas today that people are ordering even for christmas today santa claus was being done in the same way we printed santa claus and gave it to uh, somebody and that is what happened in just about few days back we printed a santa claus in the same fashion excellent so now you're talking fun like you know probably <laughs> you probably have uh, you know the figurines on top of the the wedding cake can be actually you know modeled accordingly you know like the, the bride yeah, and the bride you can you can even have your own custom face and you can have the celebrities or actors as your you know the complete uh, back part or all the structure can be just celebrities it could be a uh, you know a, what is a uh, iron man or you could be a superman or whatever it is and your face could be yours so you can do that also <laughs> that's interesting so superheroes that you yes. actually emulate you can have your face and probably the rest you can do that wonderful very nice it can even be rajnikanth uh, okay. can also be rajnikanth rajnikanth all right excellent so so the students if you're in, in probably having you want to have some fun out of 3d printers you can do that as well okay uh, so let me let me move into um, the the uh, the viability part like you know probably you mentioned that as well uh, this is for um, probably babu can respond or uh, after babu feel free to actually pitch in as well uh, the economic viability because since you have been uh, you know using 3d printing in manufacturing how viable are these and uh, uh, is there a way to move forward like you know probably is it so costly at sometimes it could be costly also compared to uh, the traditional manufacturing um, so what is your thought on that uh, babu yeah i think uh, you know uh, we have come a long way from uh, the viability perspective and today there is no question about it uh, you know we need to choose the right uh, you know case where we need to apply 3d printing but uh, beyond that it is uh, definitely uh, you know the economics are very favorable uh, why i would say is for example some of the images which uh, we can't show you know uh, if you take some parts like that you will need multiple stages to produce such a part so you would probably have three or four stage of production uh, molding and post molding operations to produce a part so it's not only uh, the time of manufacturing it's also the multiple stages the multiple number of tools and fixtures you need to make for it so if you were to make such a part actually you're going to invest a huge uh, amount of money to produce it as well as a time for sure so today's uh, scenario time is uh, much more uh, costly second thing is the number of stages so by 3d printing we actually break through that because you have a design which is ready and then you can start printing it so it's a matter of hours by which you can print it you know so it's as uh, simple as that the economics of it is uh, you know always in mass manufacturing it's a number of parts you will produce uh, with the investment which you put in the tools capital tools but uh, the other side you always have low volume batches we're talking about in the railway industry where you have 200 cars so you just have to make 200 such parts or 200 into x number of parts which is very very uh, un, un uh, viable for a say an injection molding or a blow molding or uh, say even a conventional uh, machining parts it's too expensive for that so therefore again 3d printing comes with an alternative that makes it uh, you can customize it and uh, i think even the best part of this is you can actually make uh, individual customized uh, products for different uh, uh, applications it doesn't have to be a huge uh, mass as long as you have a design you can produce it it can be as simple as one unique part so these are the advantages which make it really viable i mean if you were to look at the material cost which you are putting it into the part again there are uh, smart ways to make a design which is light weighting of these parts so you don't actually uh, produce something in a ton uh, and then you produce it in a few hours time and you are getting ready to go to the market in the fastest way possible so if you consider all this i think 3d printing can solve in in, in the case where it can be applied definitely it solves it and it makes it very viable for the uh, for for the industry to add to that uh, mr george uh, you can see in my screen right now just to answer the viability i have a couple of slides on the viability part uh, so we we have just i've just i don't know if my slide is clear so we have given three points there in metal printing and it is 10 times cheaper it is 10x cheaper 10x faster and 999x scalable 
So if you can see that these are 100% dense metal parts in stainless steel, tool steel, inconel, copper, we also talked about titanium and aluminium. So the, the 3D printing technology we are now having, uh, we, in fact, we have this machine in our setup. It's called the uh, LMD technology or laser metal deposition technology from a Spanish company called Meltio. And we have this in our setup. This machine is the one which I also talked about integrating with CNC as well as having a robotic arm and printing metal parts. And this is a, a, allowing you to have the freedom and make it cheaper. We are using industrial grade steel, which is available in the market in the roll form. And we can bring the filament and straight away into the machine here and print from the, it's like a metal electrode available from the market. And you can use it directly in a spool and print on this 3D printer. So it is making metal printing affordable today. Earlier, it was said that metal printing was costly or uh, expensive. Today, metal printing like stainless steel is a much, much uh, lower in cost and affordable to the market. So what we do in this machines is a near net finish and then we go for machining finally. So I'll just throw a couple of small applications on uh, on the other technologies, just a practical ones and cost viability. So for example, this is a functional model. Uh, it is used for functional testing. Uh, we have also partnered with a company called Mark Forged. So what you see is a composite part and the composite material is called Onyx and we use carbon fiber for reinforcement. Onyx is a, uh, a carbon uh, mixed part with plastic uh, polymer in it. So the polymer plus Onyx, we have done it on a machine called X7 on Markforge and it gives you a carbon fiber output. And if you look at it, it's a functional testing pedal model and uh, it is five times faster and 70% cost saving. So that is where we are heading to. So it is real manufacturing industry, functionally tested, uh, you, know, you know, clutch pedal and we are actually testing it with onyx and carbon fiber and we are actually able to do it five times faster and 70% cost saving. Then we have another area here. This is uh, again from Mark Forge. Uh, this is a machining soft job which is used in the tooling industry, tooling and uh, die making industry. In tooling, we are able to use this soft jaw here which you can see between metal it is sitting there and this soft jaw which you see here is able to help you in machining application. The part is called a soft jaw. The material is onyx, which is the black part, and it is again five times faster, 50% lead time saving and 50% low cost, literally half the cost. So this is where we are all heading. So I thought I could share these two, three things that are innumerable applications like this, but for want of time, I thought I can at least give you some small industries. So we can have grippers, we can have chucks, which are replaced by uh, composite material. So this is, uh, in fact, my compos composite material, which I've shown you, right? It's the same onyx material here, which is which can be used in uh, different applications. We are now using this onyx material for drones. We are actually making drones here, which can be used for actual flying in the, in the industry. We are talking to many drone companies. We are talking, this is being used in the aerospace industry, also for light weighting, and it is also being used for the uh, tools and jigs and fixtures as well. So the, what is showed in your hand right now looks like a test tube holder. Is that a test tube holder? No, no, it is just a testing uh, part with all the combination of shapes and sizes, just to show you the square, the circle, cylindrical, oh, okay. all of them. That's all. It is just a part. All right. Okay. <laughs> this is this is uh, <laughs> very interesting that you know you can do a lot of uh, things out of uh, 3D printing. So what do you foresee? Like uh, probably in a, if do you want to add something? Yeah, to the especially uh, uh, that's what. So uh, I'm completely uh, different when you are coming to the healthcare application. Uh, maybe of course uh, the pricing is keep on changing. It's keep on reducing based on the accessibility and all stuff. But at the end of the day, it's not a thing like, you know, whether it is a Maruti or whether it's a Mercedes, both is going to be, you know, help you to travel based on the affordability. But we are in healthcare, we are really thinking about flying. Something is not possible conventionally. Correct. Okay, so the, in healthcare, something is not even possible in conventional technology, conventional process. Only 3D printing is giving this, this kind of solution. So only through 3D printing, they can do some things. So, of course, it's not a big thing. Uh, about the this, this thing and all, but uh, company healthcare is a little different, and especially we are doing that something is not even possible in conventional technology. So there is no price. There is only value on it. Of course, that's that's, that's very nicely said. That's very yeah. nicely said. You know, in fact, in healthcare, it's not about the economic viability. But it's more about the value that you bring out of 3D printing because you know you're saving lives. People are willing to pay. Uh, and that's... by mentioning that it's not a super costly uh, solution, yeah, I understand also. that. Yeah. And it's it's coming to the surgical same cost itself, but the value is 
it's something is not comparable comparable and and moreover you I mean it is not possible to actually manufacture otherwise you know it no not possible to manufacture and uh, when we are talking about the 3d printing 3d printing is not just 3d printing before and after a lot of things are there before it's about the designing preparation of file if it is metal there are a lot of things are there and after printing is post processing it's it's not a oven will give you the end product so we have to remove the support finishing all the things are there so maybe they should not think like 3d printing is just easy it's not <laughs> it's it's a full process it's not just a printing okay all right thank you thank you Irai. in fact uh, just wanted to check with you in terms of like what do you foresee uh, in this industry because you know you you we're all talking about 3d printing is the future and things like that is this going to completely uh, eliminate the the traditional manufacturing and uh, do you see something like that happening in the future what is your uh, take on this no each both have their equal value something you know uh, both will not would be frank a few of the things is not possible in 3d printing for example in in in, in medical would say screws thread it's not 100 percent possible to achieve it internal structure maybe few technologies is possible but in metal i can't do this so both are equally you know uh, they have their own values and uh, both will not eliminate it something we can able to little you know uh, feasibility for example i can give you some example like uh, injection molding part we hear about engineering molding part both, it's it's a big investment for them to put the whole factory all the stuff now the figure four standalone the 3d system printer that's uh, having three guns is showing in the slide it will give you the equal quality of the injection molding okay when you do the r d the lot of investment for example if you want to do you have to prepare the mold it's almost a lack of time taken money investment but you can print it in two hours three hours so r d works so that's changing a lot of uh, you know uh, our uh, it's, it's it's reduced time. end of the day any technology it's not a, a value of money to be frank I would say like time is going to be a big deal so time we, is time we, is money right time yes, is money end of the day. Yes. So it, it's killers two days, three days work has been done in two or three hours. And uh, that's that's how the same thing is going on. OK, so so what you're saying is, I mean, in fact, you pointed out something like, you know, not everything is possible on 3D printing. The, so you still uh, feel that, you know, it, it's going to coexist, you know, all yeah. traditional manufacturing and additive manufacturing is going to coexist. That's what and hybrid probably, technology is coming. Combination yeah, hybrid. Traditional and, uh, 3D printing together. Correct, correct, correct. All right. Anybody else like you want to pitch in here? See, George, uh, I, uh, I can add here one more thing. In, the, in terms, yeah. definitely there is a big change uh, happening, but it will not displace... Uh, one will not displace the other for sure but uh, as i said i was also saying the examples you can choose the right use case where we apply 3d printing it's really worth for it uh, the other thing is what 3d printing will do is also change uh, the uh, approach to uh, manufacturing for example you can actually have a core assembly somewhere and you can have a final assembly at some other place so a hub and spoke model which uh, some of the automotive or some manufacturers talk about uh, can be done, which is easy to do in uh, this 3D printing context because you can have it at a small facility at the local place, which is next to the market, and they can start printing, 3D printing the stuff which is required, fix it, and the part can be delivered to that uh, local market. So you actually okay. uh, cut down a lot of logistics cost to move parts here and there if you can do this True. in that way. So this kind of, you know, these kind of things, these many things like this keep uh, will revolutionize uh, the manufacturing and go to market concept yeah in fact in, in fact srikant also pointed that out in, uh, much earlier saying that it's not about the manufacturing cost the lot of other costs that is getting cut down you know he was giving that example of a hanger and in the egg i mean uh, egg, uh, an aeroplane in the hangar and uh, probably parts there you know you're cutting down a lot of other costs which which yeah. would help and also time is of the essence and time yeah. is money so one, so what one thing i can uh, say probably uh, with relation to the implants uh, which uh, irai was talking about so i am one user having one with me right now so uh, the doctor uh, figured out it has to be done and uh, next day i was uh, getting operated and there is i mean uh, so there is something inside my bone now for it. So this is so as fast I, as... 
When I said the user of 3D printing, you are user in all ways. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Truly. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah. you, you, you're, you're okay with that uh, the implant? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. yes. All right. Very nice. So <laughs> all credits to the 3D printing. Thank, thanks to the engineers and the doctors. <laughs> uh, right. Excellent. So uh, what we have is we have a, a, a student uh, actually coll I mean, collating a lot of questions there. Um, uh, probably if we can uh, share some of the questions from the students. Um, probably the panel members can take some few few questions, and if you if if you have targeted questions to those panel members, that is also fine. So let's let's hear from the students if, you, if they have any questions. Yeah, Mr. George. Before that, while they do that, there's a two minute video on a case of a real life uh, video. Uh, do you think it'll interest the students? It's a manufacturing video. Or we we so what, what we can do one thing. Probably once we end this, just before we end this, we can actually show the video. That sure. would actually so that you know we can close with a with a with a visual, which will really remember, make them remember. Correct, correct. All right, let's 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 get to hear from the students. We can't hear from the microphone. Hello. If if the microphone is not working, probably you can ask your questions through the chat window. You have to unmute it. Then you have to unmute the uh, mic. Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. Yes. Not able to hear. It doesn't, I mean, it's, they Echo. don't have. No, they, I, I don't know if you, you, you can, can you hear? The, the clarity is not there. There's a bit of echo. Yeah. Now, should come from, should probably come audible from now. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Sir, now I request, is it, am I audible right now? Yes, yes, yes very clear. You can step back a little, madam. You can step back a little. Uh, sir, one of our student uh, representative will ask some questions, sir. All right. George Koshi, sir, all our questions has been raised by you to all industry experts. We have got a clear picture. Thank you, sir. Now, now I have consolidated questions. Sir, my question is, you have started this technology is a new paradigm in market. It means, is there only opportunity for 3D printing? We did not. I mean, did you understand the question? I don't know. Like, you know, what is the question? Paradigm Can you repeat that? Sir, it's a paradigm in uh, market. Yes, sir. Just st step back a little, uh, little bit. Step back a little, and you can, we can still hear you. Sir, it means is there any other opportunity for three D printing? Is there any other opportunity for three D printing? Means what? May opportunity for what? In opportunity, career, career opportunity. Are you talking about career opportunity for students in three D? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So, so what are the career opportunities uh, in three D printing for students out there? That's the question. Yes, sir. Can you, I think you should step back a little bit so that we can see your face as well when you. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you very much. What's your name? Abhinaya. Abhinaya. So, all right. Thank you, Abhinaya. So, so what are some of the career opportunities for students uh, in uh, 3D printing? Yeah, maybe uh, I can take the lead on that, uh, Mr. John, because we deal with a lot of students. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a lot of interest from engineering colleges and students in the last uh, few months. In fact, many years, and now it has accelerated a lot. Uh, if you if you can listen, if you had listened to whatever we said, uh, Abhinaya, is that uh, we the opportunities are a lot, almost into every field. Whether it's mechanical, uh, mechatronics, electronics, electronic manufacturing systems, aerospace, defense, everywhere there's an opportunity. Now, if you what you, you what I feel is students like you should learn in engineering is the opportunity is too wide and okay and too broad. Now, what you need to learn is to br bring that uh, helicopter view to something more specific. So, in the next couple of how, which which year are you are you in third year or fourth year? Which year are, of engineering are you? Uh, you're in new. Final year. Final year. Okay. Okay. Final year. When you're asking me this question, what we would expect you to tell is, I want to manufacture this part 
and I want to sell it to this industry, where is the opportunity for me? Something more specific. So what time, what we are trying to say is in the next few months within the college, because college is a perfect uh, arena, right? So figure out for yourself, which you can imagine, okay, in this industry, in this particular, for example, let me give you a small, a small example. If you look at the defense industry, because the biggest uh, spending is happening from the defense industry. So there's a lacks of crores of money being granted by the government to do things like unmanned cam vision, unmanned vehicles, night vision cameras, helicopters, satellites, drones, all of this is huge numbers. There's a potential to manufacture today. Now what you could do, go to the internet, search for a problem statement on defense and you could find umpteen number of at least 100 problem statements are there. Now, if you pick up a problem statement, sit with a group of students and do some kind of ideation. When I say ideation, take that idea and say, how do I solve this problem? The defense or the army wants to solve the problem and they're giving you an opportunity to solve the problem. Take that problem, solve that problem and try to make some part out of it. And then yes, go to the it is Kaira. huge opportunity. In any, I'm just giving you one example, but there are huge opportunity in many, many areas. Right. Thank, thank you, Sri Khan, for that. Anybody wants to? My in other room? question is, my another question is, do social weaker section can make make use of this technology with regard to medical industry? Okay, that probably uh, Iray should actually respond that. Uh, in in medical, yes, can yeah, yeah, social please. weaker yeah, yeah. section can can they make use of this technology? Uh, I'm not getting clearly what it mean by. Uh... Uh, can you just give me a little more uh, socially weaker se se section probably people who are not very rich not very affluent can they make use of this technology okay. in that's in what medical? that's what the thing is uh, we are not talking about uh, buying a printer correct <laughs> we are not talking about buying a printer we are talking about learning new things we are talking about research uh, we are talking for uh, obviously you you are final year students you might be doing a lot of your uh, final year projects so don't uh, think uh, that's what we did. Uh, we want to correct it. Don't think in the way what everyone is doing projects. Think something smart, uh, something new. Uh, you have problems all over the world. You have problems near you. You know, your neighbors have some problems, especially in healthcare. I want to stick into that. But the thing is, you find the problem, try to solve the problem. So that is your project. So uh, problem solving is more important is required in today's life and uh, social that, that that isn't a problem <laughs> for you. Don't don't think about it. OK, no, so, uh, so and nowadays, I, 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 if you have a good idea, you can easily get the investments as well. OK, so it's not about the project. I think uh, Abhinaya is asking. Abhinay is asking more in terms of like, in fact, uh, we, you have responded to this question earlier only, but this is more in terms of like how uh, people below the poverty line or not below the poverty line, people who are middle class, that uh, level of people, how do they uh, make use of this technology in the medical field? Uh, use of this technology, that's what uh, we are trying. This is not a, a super... Uh, you know, uh, costly Asli. technology. Okay. Okay. Uh, it has been, it was uh, previously. I will give you an example like uh, talking about my first case 2015. We have printed at this jaw implant on uh, two and a half, three lakhs. Okay. okay. Nowadays, uh, people are getting it for 20, 25,000 rupees. Wow. That's that's so, a pretty good. And, uh, and, and it is equal to the standard implant surgical cost. And uh, when you talk about the use of it, of course, it is little higher than the standard screws and blades, but it, it equally it will reduce your surgical time, anesthesia time, operation theater time. So obviously the money is keep on changing. I don't know how, how hospitals are handling, but this is the real fact. Very that was that was very good uh, response because you know from two and a half lakhs, if you could reduce the cost to twenty thousand rupees for a particular implant, I think uh, anybody can use the the the. Uh, technology is what I can see. And mainly 3D printing is not costly anymore. Correct. That, no. That's the reality now. Excellent. So just to add to what Ira is saying, uh, uh, George, it's a myth. Uh, people are thinking that it's a barrier. That's actually, uh, I have a, I had a slide on that to talk about the barriers on 3D printing. So people think it is costly, but actually the reality it is not. It is, as mm -hmm. I told you a couple of times, it's 50% cheaper. 
it is more economical it is i mean i remember that some time back uh, a, a small uh, uh, like a dog uh, a puppy or actually a, a was having a fract uh, a different kind of a leg it was a folded leg and it could okay. walk and actually it's a video available on youtube and uh, i forgot the name of the puppy but it was actually having a, a, a shape different shape leg so it was not able to uh, you know walk. put leg on the uh, field and walk and what they did was they they gave a plastic or thermoplastic kind of material where it could be fitted to the dog and when it is fitted here it could run in the field now that is a life saving uh, device right now somebody gave that cost there somebody you know sponsored that in an affordable way and they could do that now those costs have also come down a lot now as more and more materials evolve and today a pla or a abs what is a plastic material is available locally from the market and uh, more importantly uh, today students again i'm throwing this project to the students there are uh, materials which you can go for recycled materials like the plastic bags which come out of your garbage garbage uh, these these, these parts can be recycled and iit madras has done a recycled uh, filament out of that um, now those filaments are uh, ready to print on 3d printers in fact we sell a product we have a machine called 3 devo this machine is used to make uh, filaments so we can throw some pellets or material into it and it will manufacture a filament now students can print such make such devices no students can think of manufacturing the devices go to and look at the device reengineer the device and today you have the technology the know how and things to do such things today and we want the students to come out of their shell and do such fantastic things today excellent i i must i must add something uh, to this question this also there is a lot of democratizing happening in this kind of with this technology uh in terms of housing or disaster relief uh, uh measures when you want something pretty fast uh this is where uh, you know something like 3d printing really can also help and it is uh, uh, i think you, in in the last year you would have seen in the newspaper that uh, iit madras has actually 3d printed a house so if you can imagine this uh, conventionally building a house would take a year or two uh you could do this in few days time and you could have you could solve uh, uh, many urban issues of housing this is something an application of 3d printing and it is very economical and uh, it of course it can be funded by governments etc but it can be very economical to make a uh, housing project happen uh, over uh, quick time and in te in terms of uh, when you have uh, say an, a disaster re relief happening in some place and you would have to do something very quick there so these kind of applications will happen were the poor and needy are the ones who get benefited and it is not the cost is not going to be a deterrent for that very good very good thanks babu now now what have you seen we have seen from from toffees to houses that can be printed on 3d printing and it's like what an opportunity that you know we yeah. all have so uh, that's amazing yeah so yeah let like, yeah so we, uh, we have your question sir can you sir, can you step back can you step back a little and then respond probably we can see your face sir can you step sir, back are you hearing no we can hear you can you step back a little ah oh, okay we not able to see you okay sir okay sir sir uh, normally 3d print 3d printing uh, right now we are using uh, as a prototype making only if it possible for uh, mass production then uh, second question uh, is uh, uh, in uh, raw material 3d printing we are using as a filament or a powder form only uh, it may be possible to use uh, multiple uh, uh raw material in a uh, one machine uh, for example uh, I, I, i i need to manufacture a metal uh, uh, metal part or metal prototype then i the same machine itself i can uh, do the uh, part by without changing uh, uh, the machine machine dimensions are any something just uh, changing interchanging the raw material Okay, so your first question, I think it was already answered. Uh, it is uh, 3D printing is not just used for prototypes; it is used for end-use products as well. I, however, I leave it to the uh, panel members to speak. The second question is, can we change the raw materials without changing the machine? This is the question. Like over to you. So uh, this is easier for me because in healthcare and probably in other areas, it is a little. Uh, it takes a little bit more time to do that but in the fdm or the kind of machines that displayed in the first uh, slide of mine on the plastic printers 
uh, it's just a filament. You can just switch the filament and the machine can adopt. You can, uh, the, all the ranges I uh, described on my left slide, all of the, about four or five or six or even multiple materials are now possible in a single machine. You can have plastic, but about most of them are plastics. And now we are shifting from plastics to carbon fiber or composite material. And so you can use plastics and composites in the same uh, equipment. What you can't do is you can't shift to powder technology or you can't shift to metal on the same printer, but you can use a variety of plastics, a variety of composites in the same printer. You don't have to change the printer. You can have as much as 10 different uh, materials or even more to print on the same printer. Okay. Anybody have right? your response? No, it's already uh, clear. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Any more questions? So I I do have those videos as well. So just when we finish, we can show them. A couple sure, of sure, sure. Yes, sir. No questions from here, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All right. So, so over to you, so that we can actually share the video. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is a couple of things. One is the fun, the the extent to which a 3D printer can be used and what a university has done, literally a university has done. I'm going to show that. And before that, I'm going to show what an industry has done on 3D printing. So just, uh, I think two, two minutes, I think most of them, I can, uh, if that's okay, we can just uh, jump in. Sure. So uh, in fact, um, uh, uh, how long is the video, by the way? Two minutes, I think. The All right, excellent. All right, go ahead, go ahead. One yeah. is two minutes, the other one is also short, which we can cut short. All right. Please, please play the video. So this is my first video. Uh, just... Uh... One of the big challenges we had with the bending cell was to basically design and integrate everything in a really timely fashion. We were able to actually do it in about six months, and that would not have been possible without the additive. We found MarkForge by researching for the best printers out there for commercial and industrial quality print. The video is frozen for me. Is it for everybody or is it only for me? Something in general, what we used to was a big heavy steel tube like this to put in our press brace. So one is thing we playing? found we could do is... The video is not playing. The video is frozen. Is it frozen? Yes. Yes. I mean, at least for me. I don't know for others. No, no. It's For me also, it's frozen. It's not right. Playing now? One of the big challenges playing now, yes. In Excel was to basically design and integrate everything in a really timely uh, fashion. Uh. We were able to actually do it in about six months, and that would not have been possible without the added We found MarkForge by researching for... The best printers out there. Is it playing now? It's no, uh, no, Srikanth, at least yes. not for me. It got stuck at the same point, Srikanth. Yeah, yeah, it so. got yes, stuck at yes. the same point. One of the big challenges we had with the bending cell was to basically... It's not playing, it's not playing, Srikanth. ...everything in a really timely fashion. We were able to actually do it in about six months, and that would not have been possible without the additive. We found MarkForge by researching for the best printers out there for commercial and industrial yeah, now it's okay. One of the parts we make a lean machine is one of the big challenges we had with the bending cell was to basically design it and integrate everything in a really timely fashion. We were able to actually do it in about is it okay? six months. And that no, was again, it got stuck. I think I we think have some I, glitches. Forge, I think when I put it in full screen, it's happening. So I'll play it on the same level. No, even now it's actually stuck. One of the big challenges we had with the bending cell was to basically design it and integrate everything in a really time. Yeah, the link. Actually, do it. Uh, I think we can. You can share the link on the chat window so that we know yeah, students can have a look. We found MarkForge by researching for the best printers out there for commercial and industrial quality printing. One of the parts we make a lean machine is a. Is it okay now? Wire clip like this. The tooling no, in general. It's, it's stuck in the same point again. A uh, big heavy steel tube like this to put in our press break. So one thing we can, we can, we can uh, you can send us the link, uh, Srikanth. I think it's step. not working. The big thing that we saw with MarkForge was it took a big step from a hobby printer to something that you maybe can. The, maybe the bandwidth is not allowing uh, oh, you to do that. Parts and yes, yes. We yeah. in with that. Yes. All right. Uh, let us kind of uh, draw the curtains for this. Thank you very much. And uh, th I mean, I, I mean, in, in fact, I would like to thank all the three panel speakers. You know, it was amazing. And for me, every time I do this, I keep learning. 
uh, though I am not an engineer, I have no clue about what 3D printers are. And every time I, I do this, you know, on different um, topics, I keep learning. And thank you very much. And I'm sure that all the students also would have benefited out of uh, this uh, panel discussion. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, over to the speakers, if you have any last uh, words, you can. Uh, just to sign off, I think uh, first thing is, uh, I think uh, thanks. That was some good questions. I know there are more questions, but uh, you guys will find uh, answers uh, uh, very well. You can always get in touch with some of us for uh, that. Uh, very interesting would be that uh, today, as uh, some of the questions were asked, the technology is available and it is actually democratized. You can see it in any corner of the world. You can probably get it, uh, uh, you know, access to it. Uh, to buy the machine or uh, have uh, know somebody who has the machine to print something. So as uh, you know, Srikant said, it's something which uh, you know what is needed for you is uh, as students is to look at problems, identify what you can look at, find uh, you know ways to address it innovatively, and to realize it, the technologies like three D printing are available. You don't have any more uh, you know hindrance to say, oh, you have to make something. Oh, that's going to cost. It's going to take a lot of time. Somebody has to design it. I think you have a much, much easier and faster access to solutions when you uh, with these uh, technologies like 3D printing. So I think really uh, we would uh, look at you, uh, boys and girls, to find problems, address them, try to solve them using your knowledge, and uh, you will have access to 3D printers and uh, experts available to support you. But uh, we really look forward to seeing these things happen. Thank you. Thank you, Babu. It's a, rightly said, you know, you've got to find more problems to solve them. And, and that's a, that's a, that's a specific skill that is separate skill as well. <clears throat> it's all about, it's all design thinking, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course, from my side, the same almost, uh, please find the problem giving solution is most important in the current world. And also, um, most of the people, when I was here, students are doing, uh, uh, research or their projects based on the material, based on the machine development. They are, I have seen a lot of uh, people are doing, uh, developing their own FDM printer, assembling and all stuff. But I, I, I feel like um, we are not much concentrating on the application. Of course, we have enough technology. I don't say enough. So far, we, we, whether we are utilizing the technology, what is currently today. So the, the technology has been conveyed in a right way through the application solutions. So okay. I, I, I would like to you know, uh, encourage students or you know, people has to do their application based research where we are going to use it. For example, there are metal in, in, in especially in medical or aerospace metal is there in medical. We have a ceramic, uh, we have a, you know, uh, a lot of other things. The peak is there, but uh, there is no application, proper application. How I can use extensively for uh, how I can give solution in all the way and uh, i would like to say like you know please uh, do some r and d's or focus your uh, out of box thinking on the application how we can give the solution and um, there is no price for the creativity and you uh, know uh, passion please uh, start working and thinking on the passionate way that's that's always i will do that yeah so Excellent. thank you yeah. That's that's really right, uh, Irai. In fact, uh, even the doctoral thesis these days are more conceptual and uh, statistic oriented, and not much of uh, real time uh, application oriented. You know, if you can if you can get more of these doctoral thesis research papers, which are more application oriented, and people kind of might be using it rather than you know it is more academic oriented. I mean, I'm not saying that it is not right, but I think we should focus more on application and real time yes. uh, need oriented stuff. Yeah. If we can. Yes. Uh, so just to, I, I think you can see the it's picture in the background here. Yeah, yes. correct. Yeah. So this is the University of Maine. Just, just to give you, give the students the scope of which a university can really do. Uh, this is the University of Maine. we printing the world's largest 3D printed boat built by the largest 3D printer. So this video is available on YouTube. Just print, just type 3D printed boat, world's largest 3D printed boat, and it is done at a university. So you can see the visuals of the whole thing being done at the university level where it is being launched. 
uh, at the university level. So I think that's the creativity which we want. We want the students to go to the next level. So this, you can see this, this is a gantry level 3D printer and it is not what I showed you. It's a different level at, and it is just printed in 72 hours, manufactured in 72 hours at a university. So this is what we want to see in uh, FX, you know, FX should have special effects. Ah, excellent. In fact, we, Chennai needs more of this, uh, uh, those boats. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Luckily, we escaped this December. <laughs> I know. <laughs> excellent. All right. Thank you, Srikant. It was really, uh, I mean, I really enjoyed. Uh, so the know, boat is actually, actually put on water, you can see. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. To, to be to be also bring the other side. There is a you know the Agnikul the uh, startup which is operating out of IIT Madras Research Park. They have three D printed an engine, rocket engine. So it's a boat and there is also a rocket. rocket. So you can go. You can go either way. I'm on water, on air, on on road. To yeah, space. Build houses. Yeah. Everything. Inside body. <laughs> yeah. Not bad, man. <laughs> I think uh, Mr. George, by now the students will know really must be excited. They should get out of the seats and start manufacturing. Something. Yeah, true. True that. True that. All right. Hey, thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for your time. It was really, I would say, I enjoy these conversations, getting to learn a lot. Thank you all. And uh, uh, you have a great time. Yeah, over to Williams. Thank you. Thank you for the thank opportunity. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, sir, on behalf of uh, the Southern India Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Francis Xavier Engineering College. We'd like to thank uh, the uh, board member, Mr. Sanjay Gunasingh, who joined uh, initially, and also Dr. V. Velmurthan, principal, and Dr. K. J. Kumar of um, the FX College for kickstarting the session today. Hope this continues uh, further. And also, I'd like to thank all the, uh, the moderator and the uh, three panels, panels who joined today for investing the valuable time. Uh, I'd like to thank all the students who have who've been sitting in the auditorium as well as uh, the other members who have joined virtually today for the session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Weekend. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, sir. And thanks to ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, ma'am, for coordinating all that. The MCA HOD of uh, FX College also. We'd like to thank you, especially for coordinating all this. Sir, I thank uh, Siki for uh, rendering this sort of help to us. And uh, we got a clear insight about our 3D technology today, 3D printing. And it is very uh, uh, fruitful for our uh, student uh, career. And I hope uh, our students' ideation will be. Uh, uh, help, uh, will be turned into prototype with the help of SICC, Southern India Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I hope the support will be continuing for us. And uh, special thanks to all the organizers, William sir, uh, Vinod sir, and uh, the questioner, uh, the moderator, uh, George Goshi sir, and all the uh, representatives from the industries. Thank you so much. And it's a great uh, honor for us uh, I thank our management for giving us an opportunity to conduct these type of industry institute collaboration. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.